Vince Lombardi, while talking about the Green Bay Packers, said, they didn't do it for individual glory. They did it because they loved one another. And how you two love each other. How clearly you both feel that love. Danielle, you told me that it's because of Carla that you have become the person you've struggled to be for such a long time. 
that she taught you how to be confident in who you are, how to laugh at yourself and to not be so serious. <laughs> you actually now enjoy Carla, the self-described smartass, poking fun at you, and together you enjoy the simple things, cooking, gardening, laughing with one another. And Carla, you told me that Danielle supports you in all your endeavors and is by you 100%. She has taught you to trust again. She tells you things you may not want to hear, but you respect her opinion and you take her advice. And by example, as you say, she is a much nicer person than you are. She keeps you in check. She makes you laugh constantly, even though she doesn't think she's funny. You just have to look at her and you smile. The laughter, the lightheartedness, the trust, the respect, and the open communication are all important aspects of who you are and who you both wish to continue to be and also what you wish to cultivate in this marriage. You share common dreams of success, happiness, travel, wanting nothing but the best for each other. And your common dreams are truly lifelong. As you both said, you hope to be alive and in the same nursing home in 60 years, still laughing, still loving, and still making fun of each other. Danielle, I love you. From the moment I first saw you, I knew you were the one I wanted to share my life. I will never forget the minute I first saw you and you look, looked up to, at me. You changed my life that night. Today I become your wife and you become mine. I will strive to give you the best of myself. I promise to love you faithfully and honestly. I promise to respect you with your own interests and needs, to support you when you have struggles and challenges. I promise to keep myself open to you and communicate my innermost feelings, fears, and dreams. I promise to, go along, to grow along with you, to be willing to face change as we both change. And I promise to love you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, through the best and the worst of times, with all I have to give, and all that I am, and the only way I know how, completely and forever, no matter what. Carla, during the past few years, you've helped me grow in the person that I knew I could be. You have loved and supported me, and I promise to hold that as sacred and true. I promise to be faithful and love you no matter whether the sun is shining or the clouds darken our day. I will enjoy every day of good health and stand beside you if you ever fall ill. We will flourish whether we are rich or penniless because our love will be able to withstand anything that should come our way. Carla, you are the best thing to happen to me and I'll be there for you from now until the end of time. Mm. For it is in this moment, before God and by the power vested in me by the state of New Jersey and the private, legally binding ceremony performed there yesterday, that I now publicly pronounce you wife and wife. Two are now one. I invite you to seal it with a kiss, your first as, hot, as wife and wife.
A few, I promise. Or at least I promise to try. You guys that were at Elaine's wedding know that my toast run a little long. First, Carla. Those of you who knew Grandma Mary knew that she fancied herself as a kind of a psychic. You know, that kind of a psychic who always knew what was going to happen after it happened? <laughs> well, I'm kind of like that too. And I knew that Carla was going to be the one the very first time I met her. And no, it wasn't because she provided all the beer for the party that night. <laughs> it kind of helped though. <laughs> no, I'm not that kind of psychic. I knew that a few short years later, she'd be selling wine. <laughs> so that's why I actually left. But there she was, this shy and quiet girl, yeah. <laughs> standing in my sister's living room at my surprise 34th birthday party. I was only able to talk to her for a short time that night, but by the end of the night, I was hugging her. You now you were thinking it was all that free beer. <laughs> But I said to her, thank you, Carla, for being here for Danielle. I don't know if you remember that. I don't know why I said it at the time, but I just knew that she was going to be the one who ultimately brought my big sister the love, happiness, and acceptance that I always knew she deserved. So here I am again saying thank you, Carla. Not only because now that you sell wine, I get wine, <laughs> but for being here for Danielle. Thank you for being here for Danielle and for coming into our lives and becoming that elusive fourth DeMarco sister. I know, I know, it's an honor and a privilege. Sometimes a curse. Regardless, we love you like a sister and welcome to the family. Now Danielle. Danielle has always been my protective big sister, my mostly easy to live with roommate on three separate occasions, my very creative and influential partner in crime, sorry Patrick, alleged partner in crime, <laughs> my sometimes nemesis, but mostly and throughout, she has been my bestest friend and my better half. Danielle was so excited for my arrival that on the day I was born, she was climbing the walls. She was literally climbing the walls the day I was born. From that moment forward, we were inseparable. We dressed in the same groovy fashions of the 1970s. We rocked the same hot bowl haircut. We shared the same creative genius that drove us to paint the walls of my parents' Long Island home with Philadelphia cream cheese. We asserted our defiant femininity by stealing our father's razor and shaving our hairy little six and eight year old legs underneath her bed. There was a lot of bloodshed that night. <laughs> Moving forward, we forged a financial future at our first job together at Gennardi Supermarket, the same supermarket that saw the budding love of Elaine and Brad. <laughs> And um, we, moved into, we moved on to experiment with the thrills of adulthood as we shared a couple refreshing and light Bartles and James wine coolers in our parents' basement. Sorry. <laughs> Danielle and I, even as we went on to different colleges and started on different paths in life, remained very close. She was always number one on my speed dial. No matter where we were, in the same city or miles apart, we would share the glory of new and exciting discoveries as we traveled through life. We would cry together when boys or girls didn't think we were as spectacular as we thought we were and that we know we are. We would revel in the fact that together we made as many messes as we somehow mustered the courage to clean up. <laughs> we did what better halves do. We lived our lives and shared in the good times and the bad. We stood by each other and we held each other up. She's always been an amazing sister, a lifelong friend, and been right where I needed her to be, by my side, for better or for worse. Carla, now it's your turn. <laughs> now you get to be my big sitter's, sister's better half, and I'm ha happy to hand over the reins. Just hold on tight, she's a feisty one. <laughs> but remember, she is my heart. She's my big sister, my bestest friend. 
I love her so much, and I know you do as well. Forever and ever, happily ever after. I know, that was a long one, but I'm done. To my sisters, Danielle and Carla, chin down. You may drink. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Danielle's youngest sister, not littlest. Elaine, I have hundreds of embarrassing and incriminating stories I could tell you about my oldest sister. Like when she sneaked me beer not to tell my mom that she was having parties. Or when she snuck out through the back door and it ended in a high speed chase involving my parents. But since it's my, her wedding day, I'll leave it at that. When Danielle told me that she had fallen in love with Carla, I was a tad skeptical. But the second she brought Carla into our lives, I quickly understood why she had fallen smitten so quickly. Carla is the type of person you love to be around. Her love for my sister is evident in every glance and stroke of the hand. She has helped my sister through some tough times, some wonderful times, and all those in the middle. She immediately made a spot for herself inside our family and became an instant fixture. I thought I was the luckiest girl in the world to have two sisters but now I'm happy to have three. I can speak for my whole family. I don't, I'm not the one that gets choked up here. I can speak for my whole family when I say thank you for loving my sister and making us all a part of your life. Now, Danielle, many of us can remember back to my own wedding where you likened me and Brad to a television sitcom. Well, I'm glad to see that you're writing one of your own. Having two sisters to look up to was the best thing I could have asked for. Growing up with Danielle, she was my hero. Her favorite color was blue, her favorite number was six, and her favorite football team was the Giants. Ironically, I shared in all of these same interests. Some of my fondest memories as a child were playing down at the creek with my sisters, where Danielle told me, taught me to make a fallen piece of wood into a kitchen, a mound of dirt into a dining room table, dirty creek water into a gallon of milk, and any ditch into a suitable bathroom. <laughs> as expected, with the six years that separated us, Danielle grew up and stopped venturing to the creek with me. Instead, she turned her interest towards clothes, J.C. Penney's Kmart James Way bag, Express Macy's Benetton, good. <laughs> Hairspray, the higher the better. And boy bands, New Kids on the Block, her personal favorite. <laughs> Spending time together got to be a little bit more difficult and usually included me sneaking into her room and hiding undetected under her bed to sing along to her favorite tunes, like Hanging Tough and The Right Stuff. Well, thank goodness mom had gotten you a canopy bed with such a large space underneath. As expected, my job as little sister was embarrassing her. Once in the middle of a chorus recital, eager to stand by my sister's side, I ran up to join the special chorus and belted out, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Danielle was not a fan of my singing. She turned bright red and told my mom I was embarrassing her. As we grew up and the age gap between us closed, we turned from big sister, little sister, to friends. The days of hiding under her bed to spend time with her were over. She volunteered to coach my basketball team and defended me as I started a fight long after the game had ended. <laughs> Dude, she was wrong. <laughs> Unfortunately, just as we were beginning to get close, it was my turn to ship off to college. One of my greatest memories of college was Leanne and Danielle coming to visit me and taking me to my first Indian restaurant in Bloomsburg, no doubt. The night before my own wedding day, I laid in bed wide awake. Finally, I snuck into Danielle's room and woke her up. I told her I couldn't sleep. Without a word, Danielle got up and climbed into my small twin-sized bed with me. And with her at my side, I fell fast asleep. Although Danielle often forgets it, she is still one of my biggest heroes and mentors. While I've converted to an Eagles fan, you're welcome, Brad. My favorite color is now hot pink. My favorite number continues to be six. 
Danielle, as always, I am continuing to be awed by the person you are and the strength that you show. You and Carla are two of the luckiest people I know, and as you have found each other and have the as you have found each other and have years ahead of you to make new memories, you guys have the right stuff. Don't get your hooked up. We're not playing these days on the block.